Wait for it. All right, I'm going to show you how to dramatically increase the size of your forest. I'll also show you how to keep the respawns of trees efficient, as well as the removal of trees. And I'm accomplishing this by splitting the trees across multiple different actors, uh, sort of in a grid. So let's get to it. On our tree spawner, let's expand the collision box's extents. We'll try 50,000 by 50,000 to start. Right click play and test this out. Little delay when everything spawned in and we're getting some hitches when we remove trees. Refreshing, uh, that's pretty abysmal. So that's not the way to go. Let's try this a different way. I'll reset box back to the default. And instead of one big spawner, I'm going to try to create multiple little spawners. But instead of doing it by hand, I want to make a helper. So blueprint, actor, bp underscore spawner, spawner, and a new PCG, PCG underscore spawner, spawner. In the blueprint, I'm going to add a spline component and a PCG component. Let's make the spline a little bigger. and close loop, and the PCG. Let's select that spawner spawner that we just created. Compile, save. And now let's uh, add some stuff to the PCG. So we need a get spline data. I'll just leave it at self because the spline is on the same actor as the PCG. Spline sampler. And the spline sampler I'm going to set to on interior. And the interior sample spacing I want, the extents for the tree spawners is 2500 right now. So I need to set the interior sample spacing to 5000, which is double the extents. And I'll make it unbounded and a spawn actor node is how I'll do the last thing. And I'm going to choose as my template actor class, tree spawner. And I'm going to choose the option to not collapse actors because I want my actors to stay unique, have their own scripts, and be able to function independently. All right, so let's see what we've got. Let's drop spawner spawner on in and make it a bit bigger. And there we go, we're spawning in trees. Let's remove this original tree spawner and try this out. Remove a few trees works. It's pretty fast. Refreshing them isn't working. And that's because back under third person blueprints, BP third person, we're only getting a single actor of class. So one of these trees will respawn, but not all of them. So let's just get actors, get all actors of class, tree spawner. And I will add a for each loop. And just for every tree spawner we find, we will call respawn trees. Not the most efficient to get all actors of class every time, but this is for debug purposes, so I'm not all that concerned. Let's try this again. Do, 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 clearing out trees and refreshing. And if you saw that, that is the same problem we ran into earlier, where if the graph starts out spawned, it refreshes immediately. So let's clear spawner spawner and make it not regenerate in editor. And now let's try playing again. Remove few trees. Refresh. Small hitch when I refresh. But it's still working. Great. So let's 
fix that hitch. Under tree chopping, we can make the refresh more efficient by only refreshing tree spawners that have actually changed. So let's open up tree spawner and on respawn trees, there are a couple things that indicate there might be a change. If ISM points has any data in it, so if the length of ISM points is greater than zero, that's a reason to refresh because we are going to save points off to the rolling points data. The other thing is if the current wave points data get points, if the length of that is greater than zero, that also indicates there's a change. And let's drop in current wave here. So if the length of this is greater than zero, that means the previous refresh, this wave was removing points and we're freeing up the points, so we need to do a refresh. So I can add in an or Boolean right here and a branch. And let's hook this on up. All right, so if either of these are true, we allow it to generate and I'm going to advance the seed so that the seeds stay synced between all of them. And uh, I do want to advance the current wave, so putting the branch right here is the way to go. Let's try this again. Play from here. Remove few trees. Refresh. And yeah, very few delays. You did see the trees pop in when refresh, but uh, that's something that we'll come to later. Okay, let's add another improvement to this. I want to make sure it works well on hills, so let's drag this on over here and go ahead and generate this. And no, it doesn't work on hills. It's just generating right here and we get nothing. So I'm going to add the projection node into spawner spawner right before we spawn actor. Projection. And the target will be get landscape data in the projection node. I do not want to project rotations. And on the get landscape data, I can get height only. And I'm going to uncheck must overlap self because I've had this in some situations result in unexpectedly not spawning things. All right, now let's see how this looks. Clean up, generate, and there we go. That looks a lot better. All right, so there's another thing to take care of. On spawner spawner, we have no variables. On tree spawner, we have respawn time and wave count that we could be setting. So let's uh, add these to spawner spawner and pass them on through to the tree spawner. We also have the grid size that we could modify just to test out various efficiencies of varying spawner sizes. So let's add those variables. We're going to add three variables, grid size, type float, respawn time, parentheses m, also type float, and wave count, type integer, and expose that. So compile, save, and in spawner spawner, we can add get actor property. One for grid size. One for respawn time, parentheses m. And one for wave count. With grid size, we can already do something. In the spline sampler, we have interior sample spacing, 
Let's just hook that on up. And now we can make sure that works. Save this. Clean up and back on the spawner spawner. Let's make the grid size. Oh, we don't want default zeros. Let's try 10,000 for grid size and generate. And there we go. They are farther apart. Perfect. So let's go ahead and fix those default values. Default wave count, let's make, oh, the default wave count was three on the previous one, so let's make this four so we can tell the difference. Let's make this respawn time 23 so it's unique and we can tell the difference, and grid size. Let's just default it to the tree spawner's default size. All right, so now that we've updated those, let's update the spawn actor, and actually, let's see what this is. Error when creating respawn time M. So that is because the output attribute name has a parenthesis in it, and PCG doesn't seem to appreciate parentheses in attribute names. So I will remove it from that, and then on our spawn actor, we want to pass through three overrides, one for each variable. And these are going to go straight through into tree spawner. So I've got grid size, respawn time, and wave count. And now respawn time, the property target is what is in tree spawner, and that is respawn time parentheses m in tree spawner. So let's add the parentheses m to the property target. And there we go. It seems to be happy with that. So now we need to add these attributes into the points themselves so they can go through into the spawn actor. I can do that with add attributes. And I'll just use three of these. And hook these properties on up. And I'm going to just explicitly call out what each attribute is. Output target grid size for the first one, respawn time with no M for the second, and wave count for the third. All right, save that, and let's go ahead and test this. Clean up generate, and tree spawner, 23 respawn time for wave count. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Now, under tree spawner, we're passing grid size, but there's no variable for it. Let's just go ahead and add that grid size. Type will be float, and I'll make it visible. And now that we have grid size, we're going to have to do something with it. Under construction script, I'm going to add something for the box. Set box extents. And I'm going to set it to grid size, make vector x and y, and hook that on up. The z can be 5,000. But uh, box extents is, needs to be half of grid size, as we kind of looked at earlier. So I'm going to add a divide node here, and I'll divide grid size by 2, and then I'll feed that 2 into the vector, which I then feed into box extent. Let's add a, another pin to the sequence node, hook that on up there, and compile, save, and let's see if this works. Clean the PCG, generate, and that looks good. Let's try cleaning it up again and make the grid size back to 2500. Actually, 2500 is smaller than it was, so generate. And there we go. So, grid size is working. Let's set it back to 5000. Clean up generate. And let's just move this back to the center for testing, clean up, generate, there we go. All 
All right, that's working well. We can remove a bunch of trees and they respawn fairly smoothly. No noticeable hitches. And yeah, that's pretty good. If you do notice that your trees are flashing in when you refresh them, I just set my trees up to 20,000 for demonstration purposes. So if they're flashing like that when you spawn them in, that's caused by your PCG is just trying to respawn too many trees, too many points with collision all at once. So with this current setup, there are a couple options to address that. You can either decrease the density of your trees in your tree spawner surface sampler by, for instance, uh, raising the looseness, or you can lower the grid size. Either way, you'll be working with fewer points, fewer static meshes at once, so things will refresh faster. And now, since we have a lot more points, I'm going to modify third-person character and change this chop action. And now, if I play, I can mow down tons and tons of trees at once and sort of do a stress test. Okay, next time I'm going to cover how to dynamically enable and disable collision in order to make things respawn a lot faster because objects with no collision spawn ridiculously fast compared to objects with collision enabled.